Greetings, everybody. Welcome back to another Nerd Escape podcast episode with me, Damien, a.k.a. Irish Trekkie, Chris the Trek Collector, and Linda Hen in a hat. How's everybody Woo-hoo. this week? Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a crazy world we live in. It's gotten crazier. And yeah. oh, wow, yeah, I just hope everyone is staying safe. Yes, exactly. And we're here to distract you exactly uh, as well with some sci fi shenanigans. And uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. So we're thinking of everybody uh, globally. And uh, again, stay safe is our motto for the last few months around here. Um, But as I said, we're here to uh, give you a little bit of levity in relation to the world of science fiction. So uh, we're going to tackle some Trek news and we're going to have a little bit of a fun play at home kind of game that we teased in the last um podcast about our fantasy crew um but first off let's have a look at trek news with uh chris chris what's been happening yeah well it's been interesting we've got two actors looking to come back to star trek we have Lorca, prime Lorca. yes and we dun, also dun, dun. have the man himself mr hooker no sorry James T. Cook. <laughs> TJ. TJ Kirk. Hooker, yeah. <laughs> so these are interesting little snippets, but of course, like with William Shatner, we've there's always kind of like a lot of fake news around William Shatner, and I know it was said that he doesn't watch Star Trek, but like I can understand that from actors, you know what I mean? It's very hard. Like sometimes it's very hard for myself to go back and listen to a podcast that I'm in. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of... <laughs> I don't know. So, some people, you know, it, it's down to their own. I won't hold it against them. But interesting. But what I want to kind of more do with this news is just to kind of see. So we'll start with Gabriel Lorca, Prime Lorca. And I'm going to throw this one over to Linda. How yeah. would you like to see him? If he was to come back into Star Trek, how would you like him to come into? It? And you've got all the new series that we know that have been announced to choose from. Well, where is he? He's supposed to be... He's suppo- is he supposed to be missing? In the mirror universe. Or has be- he been... He's missing yeah. in the mirror universe. Yeah. So, right. So, he obviously would have to make his way to the Prime Universe yep. to get into one of the, the new series. So, has he snuck through the the same time as everyone else? Was he aboard the, the uh, alternate Discovery? Mm. Or has he come through by himself? I don't know. So there's a lot of... First, how did he get here? So there's a lot of possibility there. Um, mm. So I don't know. Where would I like to see him? Now, the um, interesting thing is, what you call it, the ultimate discovery was destroyed and he wasn't captain on the ultimate discovery. And if I remember right, I can't remember the name of the ship. Um, the Miriam, Gagarin. Was, that's the one. So he would have changed places there, but the Gagarin was also destroyed. But we're going to assume... He managed to escape. So that's kind of like where we know. We know what happened to Mirror Universe Lorca. Of course, he got kind of like sporosified at the end. So just yeah. to help mm-hmm. you kind of place. So we're assuming, and I like your theory there, that maybe he, he did sneak aboard Discovery yeah. and went back with the crew. Would be ooh. <laughs> a hidden stowaway. There, yeah, there, there was a lot of speculation um, there still is a lot of speculation as to what happened to Prime Lorca, um, but I do believe he is kicking around somewhere. Um, <laughs> and I yeah, I think they they are if they're not planning it, they're seriously thinking about it because he's a great cap. He was a great captain, a great character. He was a great captain until we figured out he was bold. <laughs> so I really do think they would Naughty love to Lorca. bring him back. Ah, oh, yeah, he was a bad boy. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I, I, when we when we thought he was who he said he was, I just thought this is the best captain ever. Isn't he so cool? <laughs> <laughs> and so any of the shows, which, what show would you like to see him squeeze into? I suppose uh, Strange New Worlds. He would okay. kind of slip slip in there easily enough, you know, at that in that kind of time period. You know, I, and yeah. um, Pike knows all about him. Of course, he's been briefed, so... Yeah, that'd be interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Damien, same question over to you. Where would you like to see Gabriel Lorca reappear? Yeah. um, Kind of putting some thought into this, which I rarely do uh, on topics. (laughs) But um, I was kind of... I I wanted to see him in Strange New Worlds as a kind of a a popping character that 
falls into one of these episodic stories that um we're, we're going to be uh privy to when the show hits the air but my, my my kind of thinking to maybe explain it is that um the gagarin we know was destroyed and the crew was taken aboard the emperor's ship so either yeah he did escape there but then how does he get back or during the transporter incident maybe he didn't end up in the mirror universe maybe he ended up in another parallel universe yep and um again that could be the story arc there um that we could see him eventually come back in um to the prime timeline because again like that as, as, as linda said like you know he was a pretty cool captain you know uh, kind of almost like maxwell vibes you know not everyone's friend or anything like that but still had some cool characteristics that uh was very different on discovery but uh listen jason isaac's back in star trek sign me up he was no he was kind of he kind of ref referred if mira Lorca was hard ass he didn't want to be kind of a oh i can't think of the comedian he didn't want to be kind of like he doesn't want prime Lorca to be kind of like a goofy kind of clown character <laughs> <laughs> which was yeah. very funny by jason i think uh if he was to come back i think this could be a cool one for the new section 31 show with Giorgio. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. That would be True. kind of a cool fit in. Um, and then maybe, like, I, I imagine he obviously, he, he's he, he, it's going to be kind of like roles that, like, he might, you know, if it suits him film to film. So I think that could be a cool thing for the Section 31 show to cover. Yeah. If there's mm-hmm. maybe some form of a distress that only certain people in Starfleet, which, of course, would be Section 31, would hear. And it could be an operation to rescue him. And who else would be better to rescue him than Giorgio herself? Which would be fairly, <laughs> yeah. fairly... It would be, yeah. be a very cool way to actually kick off the Section 1 thir- uh, series. So Giorgio going back to her old universe. So the mm. leaves shenanigans there. But it would be interesting. Like I think some people turned around. They, were, they liked the post-traumatic stress with Lorca that he was shown. And yeah. I think that would be cool to be touched upon. Uh, with him coming back so maybe does he come back into discovery at a later point as well so he's not the Lorca that we've seen Mm -hmm. on screen he's a broken Mm -hmm. broken man because he's been Jesus I think he's the person that's been in the mirror universe the longest (laughs) so and we know it's not quite a lovely lovely place so moving on from Lorca we've got Mr. Shatner now as well keen to reprise his role at James C. Kirk and I suppose I'll probably try and start this one off because this is a hard one because we know he died in Generations we know he was in the Nexus Um, Mm -hmm. you know he died aboard the Enterprise B so how would William Shatner fit in again I'm going to assume it's maybe a one off Um, whoa Hmm. It could be interesting. You, like you don't c- tend to always want to be crossing over to the mirror universe, but there was a time when he was trapped under the Defiant. Um, maybe he didn't get off the Defiant. It's not the mirror universe, but as Damien said, an, a, another alternate uh, universe, maybe for a mm-hmm. one-off episode where he's gotten old, which could explain that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Mm, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I like Shatner. I, how, um, I, I like I, I, I like I like Captain Kirk, but I don't mm. want to kind of see a wishy washy way to bring his character back from the dead because no. it was kind of done in generations anyway. Because he he was dead <laughs> and he came back from yeah. the dead. <laughs> what about something on the holodeck? Ooh, that's a good one, Damien. Yeah, like a mentor kind of a program. Yeah. So you're yeah. going with holodeck, Damien. I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, like what? What my mind was thinking was, um, uh, Guinan was in the Nexus as well, even though because like it's been a while since I watched Generations, but like a part of her was left behind when she when they were in the ribbon that time. Yeah. Mm. Um. So potentially, you know, you could explain it that way that a part of Kirk is always in the the Nexus, but um, you know, a practical thing like I watched uh, Booby Trap there recently and there was that whole episode where um leia brams and geordie were on the holodeck and like you could put kirk in there to help yeah. solve uh moral or you know strategic issue um and uh it, you wouldn't have to be messing around with timelines or yeah 
any shenanigans just straight into the character and there you go boom you've actually give me a good idea where he could fit in but i'm going to put it over to linda and see where she'd like mr shatner if he was to come back where again you've got any of the star trek shows to choose from at the moment oh i don't know it would have to be something like like a holodeck or i just can't i just can't imagine him he is a, again <laughs> he's a hard cookie to fit in because he yeah. is such you know what i mean he has such a presence yeah. and you know I, what i mean think it takes I, away as much as as much as he wants to come back i really don't think it would be you know feasible for okay. his character to appear anywhere really um, other than a yeah. younger version of him yeah. you know where he's already he's already you know the time he was famous before the enterprise or i don't know it's just he's mm. oh i don't want to say he's too old but it just it it would not really fit with any of the series that okay. are on at the moment i just i don't think so i don't think so and i like yeah. your honesty there linda i'm gonna i'm gonna <laughs> jump back in there actually because damien gave me an idea because he said guinan and actually picard could actually be the place where season two because we know guinan's rumored to come back so as you mm-hmm. said, Damien, maybe a visit back to the Nexus with Picard, Kirk and Guinan would suit in as a one-off role, which wouldn't rock the apple cart. He comes yeah. in. It'd be interesting to see how, how like, because again, I, I'm kind of with Linda a bit, even though I love Captain Kirk. Yeah. It's a hard one to put a storyline in for him. But I think... A short Trek. A short Trek would be very, very good. But again, it's, you know, he has aged a lot. And it's just, you know, if you take it from where we last seen him in generations, you know what I mean? You know, unless he wants to, like, voice himself at, like, with a CG, you know, one of these CGI, a younger Kirk coming back in, absolutely fine. But, yeah. you know, it's... it's do you know, it do you know what would be one. cool? I think he would make a cool computer voice. Ooh. He is in Elite Dangerous, the game. Did you know that? Oh, is he? Oh, no. There we go. Yeah, he... <laughs> There, there's a voice pack that you can get for that game for Ooh. people out there who's not aware of Elite Dangerous. It's like a, a one-to-one space simulation <laughs> for Galaxy. But um, <laughs> this is like, a, yeah, exactly. Your ship can have voices and uh, he does one. A lot of actors have actually done them, but uh, yeah, he could be in your ear telling you about your cool. landing gear and thrusters and stuff like that. Okay, that's, that's cool. <laughs> Excellent. That's cool. I, th- I think everyone had a good input um, and, you know, we'll be looking forward to listening to what everyone else thinks about, you know, where they'd like mm. to see these two fantastic characters fit in. Um, I think Lork is the easy one. <laughs> I think for the script writers, yeah. it's a tough one. I think a lot of original fans would be delighted to see William Shatner come back. But again, at the same time as well, it's. I think with Star Trek, it, it is a funny thing. It, it's not about just giving the fans what they want. You know, it's very easy to say, oh, we'll bring back William Shatner. But it's how you bring him back mm. and the story. Mm. So, you know what I mean? It's very easy just to say, yeah, we'd love to have him back. But, you know, I think the fans like a good story. So I think if they just throw him back and very much, yeah, the story doesn't work, forget it, you know, but like, it, it, it's good to hear you guys, your your thoughts. I, I, I like the, Damien, I like your idea. I think maybe Picard would be the place for Shatner. I'm starting to think Section 31 for Lorca would be a kind of cool kind of first. Mm. I like kind of like a good two-parter. Agreed. Opening for Section 31. It's a strong storyline. You know what I mean? I think, you know, that would be actually kind of cool. A stress signal from Prime Lorca to Get the hell out of that mirror universe. So that's our Trek news uh, for this week. So let us know what your thoughts are uh, in the comments below. Where would you like to see Prime Lorca and uh, James T. Kirk appear uh, in the future of Star Trek universe that is unfolding before our very eyes? So uh, let's have a look at some of our shenanigans that we have planned. So for those who listened to the last podcast uh, maybe you have your crew already lined up but uh, we're going to talk about our second type of fantasy crew uh, this time spanning uh, the Trek universe so Linda mm-hmm. do you want to give us a knockdown of what homework Chris gave us oh yeah uh, well, between now and the last podcast <laughs> it was very tough homework Chris thanks for that <laughs> well, it was Damien's idea um, <laughs> was it okay it was Damien's uh, idea I just kind of structured I let you go through the structure but it was nice I, I, I gave two kind of yeah no this is the kind of thing that people do all the time you know this what is your fantasy crew um yeah no it's what people talk about you know who's your favorite captain your favorite 
you know, first officer. You actually gave us all the roles to fit in. Uh, con, ops, tactical, doctor, engineer, communications. And then you gave us two wild cards. Yes. Which we could pick whatever character, whatever role we felt like. I thought that was a nice um, touch. Yeah, mm-hmm. I liked that. Thanks, thanks for that flexibility. <laughs> um, uh, and the most important character, what ship we yeah. pick? I, I'm proud of that one. Now. That that yep. kind yeah. of came to me, but That's... you you came up with a great one as well, which is you know part uniform. Of yes, absolutely. Yeah. So I think this is going uniform to be is very important. Yes. And Damien, you didn't want to leave behind the old pets, so we have to have a pet on board <laughs> as well. Exactly. And this is the kit to <laughs> exactly. this is the kit to continue on with our team with supposedly there's a pet coming into Discovery. So yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> you need a pet. So yeah, so shall I start? Yes, you shall. So. Okay. So I started from the top and my captain I picked Pike. Okay. Of course so, uh, yeah. Mm. The Pike Discovery and for, Discovery's Pike. For reasons. So you can do a captain, Damien do a captain, I do a captain and we'll do it in that kind of way. Yeah, I think it'd be cool. Okay. So why Pike? Um, do you know my favorite captain was always Janeway, and then Pike came along <laughs> and kind of, <laughs> kind of just destroyed every other <laughs> option <laughs> for me. No, I it, it, he was just amazing. Every word that came out of his mouth was just perfection. <laughs> yeah, he was, was basically. He was very strong yeah. in discovery. Yeah, um, he just yeah. had that sudden impact, didn't he? Really, he just kind of like yeah. He just yeah. walked into the role, walked onto the bridge, and into the role. So Pike for me. Oh, um, okay. So Chris, who okay. is your captain? Okay, we're going to me, and I'm going to go with Cisco. I thought Cisco just kicked ass. Mm. I just thought there were so many sides of Cisco um, that I loved. I thought he was a fantastic dad. I thought he was fantastic with his crew, in the sense that. <laughs> Cisco, I think, was one of the first ones. We've seen Picard blow up, but it was never really kind of like a real blow up. But Cisco, when he blew up, like O'Brien or mm. Bashir acting the maggot, you know what I mean? <laughs> when he went <laughs> to town, he went to town. But I thought he was firm but fair. Um, someone you could go to, someone that yeah. didn't take any crap, and a tactical genius in the Dominion War. So it's Captain Cisco all the way for me. Cool. I, I actually could have predicted that. <laughs> you're, a, you're a huge DSI fan <laughs> and Damien <laughs> um, I went with uh, James T. Kirk from the Ooh, JJ universe okay da, da, da. Oh. Uh, because Chris Pine I just really liked him as a character and yeah. he's not perfect he's extremely smart but uh, like through the three movies we saw you know the cowboy nature the again dedication to his crew the dedication to himself um and again him you know hitting some lows uh but you know working with his crew to get some uh to come out on top as well and just again just a bit of a cowboy and uh, i just think mm-hmm. he'd be very fun to uh whirl around in the shipping yeah i, th- I, th- I think again with looking at as linda said with pike coming into discovery and i think with the jj movies one thing chris by nailed this role um Mm -hmm. arrogant full of himself and lots of mistakes but learning and he was absolutely yeah he nailed the role exactly i I loved the the kobayashi maru scene was just (laughs) the apple (laughs) it was sucked the apple and the just the apple (laughs) exactly (laughs) <laughs> oh, amazing yeah, yeah. okay so okay. great choices so we have at the moment we have Captain Pike for Linda Captain James D. Kirk by Damien and I'm surprised by that Damien actually I thought you would have gone for Picard but and Captain Cisco mm. by myself so Linda mm. ooh, commander right my well I have chosen to Paul nice mm. yeah I think she well she should have been given a Starfleet commission anyway um she just yep. she she captained the Enterprise more than probably any other first officer <laughs> in the franchise, um, and she was a perfect captain when she had to step in. So she Ooh. is my first officer choice. Okay, now remember, to awesome Paul, character. To Paul did actually manage to shatter um, a cell on the NX one, and Trip Tucker wasn't very very happy with her. But that <laughs> who has it? Who has it? <laughs> <laughs> but no, actually, T'Pol was one that I would have liked to fit in. 
to my list. Yeah, I, I think a Vulcan, you really need a Vulcan, a, a Vulcan backing you up because they're going to follow orders. They're not going to mm-hmm. BS around the place. They're, they're just going to do their job. You know, they're not going to have any emotional outbursts mm. <laughs> I, unless, you know, maybe look what she did with the years. E2 as well. Yeah. You know, she managed that ship for years yeah. and years and years. Yeah, and the other great thing about the Paul is her loyalty. Like, she was there yeah. under the, the Vulcan Ministry of Science. And, yeah. you know, she seen the she seen the potential of humanity under Archer and crew. And she's mm. seen that they had potential. And she stuck with them. And she kind of, like, two fingers, um, not the Vulcan salute, anyway, to uh, <laughs> <laughs> her superiors <laughs> from time to time, which was really, really cool. Oh, good choice, okay, Linda. Yeah. Good choice. So I suppose Thank it's you. back to me. So I am going to go with number one from Strange New Worlds. Oh. Um, mm. I think very, very strong female kick-ass number one. Very short, to the point. Just an excellent number one to me, I just think, and definitely deserves the name number one. I can see why anyone would actually give her that pat. And just for people that mightn't know... Number one was kind of like a Starfleet kind of pet name for a captain that really liked their commander. So if, you know, in shows, if they're just called commander, there's not really a great relationship there between captain and commander. (laughs) Mm. So it's kind of like a pet name for your... uh, So Riker did okay by Picard. He did. He did. He did. So yeah, I'm going with Um, number one. Interesting. Mm. Hey, Demo? I... I went with uh, Ganglia Free Saru. Oh, yes. Uh, because, like, kick ass. He's, he's kick ass. Did you not uh, think the Ganglia you know, were kind of handy? Physically. Though? That's actually quite true. Well, it like, was. But I, I mean, <laughs> and I'm just getting that scene. They remember? Were, but he, his senses are still there. <laughs> Do you remember that scene where, what you call his Ganglia come down <laughs> and he just looks at, I can't remember, was it your man on communications says, as well, aren't you? <laughs> what, <laughs> what you expect like yeah, yeah you expect. exactly exactly but um yeah. yeah again kind of like he like he's a kind of like a cross between like a data and like a a, a spot character as you can get you know the kind mm. of naivety but logic and again with the ganglia you know he was very like you know risk adverse uh but kind of pushing himself out there but uh Interesting to see what he's going to do in season three now. But um, like he, like, man, he made a great captain. But uh, again, loyal to a fault as well. And um, I think it'd be very cool uh, in that role as we've seen him in Discovery as well. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I liked Saru. Yeah, I do too. Perfect. I think he was kick ass. Yeah. Okay, Linda. Yeah, let's Security do... chief time. Oh, security. Where am I? Security. Okay, so yes. There's only one. There's only one guy I would trust Ooh. out of all all the security, all the tactical, tactical officers is Reed. Oh, okay. Yes, mm. Malcolm yeah. Reed. Malcolm okay. Reed. He. Oh man, have you seen him clearing a room? He's just he <laughs> goes in phaser first. I would trust him with my life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think he, he he. I can picture him just practicing his. His um, tactical stuff in his spare time. Um, yeah, I think I was. Uh, I love Worf, but. Calibrating uh, the weapons. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love yeah. Worf, but I just think he's allergic to any kind of phaser combat. He wants to just hit someone on the head. And he just is the. He's not great at his job. <laughs> um, uh, no, someone that old yeah, actually yeah, did point out to him when he got to Deep Space yeah. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly mm-hmm, yeah mm-hmm. no the amount of times Worf <laughs> did not get the bad guy so yeah no Reed really is uh, my guy okay well I am going for the guy that hits people awesome. on the head and doesn't do his job right <laughs> I am going with Worf because I just <laughs> there's just something about Worf um, I think it was brilliant by Gene just to kind of like with Star Trek and initially like a show that was set up that what you call it, the Klingons were the bad guys and you had the Federation and it was fairly very ingenious that like as time goes by people change Worf was the first Klingon in Starfleet and I just liked the way his role developed and I liked the way we got more yeah. backstory to the Klingons and I loved his relationship with Jadzia Dax 
and I just think he's just mm. he is fantastic is he the best at his job I think Odo was right you know what I mean Odo had to run <laughs> D Space 9 which was a huge bloody station and Worf kind of had more shenanigans on board the Enterprise than there was going on on D Space 9 so I suppose if you were to pick the top guy for security chief I think it would be Odo but I have to have Worf in mm. there so I'm going with Worf okay fair enough Damien good 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 um, because of my previous choices with, you know, JJ Kirk and Saru, I, I did want a Vulcan presence on the bridge. So, uh, I opted for Tuvok from, Ooh, uh, nice. Love Voyager. Um, again, you know, he's like he, coming into Voyager. He, he played that role in the Maquis. So it's like, right, you are capable of, uh, you know, playing, uh, two sides of, uh, of a card. But, um, you know, again, having a little bit of Vulcan logic, having, you know, the pawn fire to deal with, you know, and all that jazz, um, you have to have a little bit of Vulcan on the bridge. And uh, Tuva, he was he was a cool security chief. And, and dealing with and, uh, Neelix all yeah. the time, nagging him, which was, <laughs> it was a great relationship. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm actually loving the way at the moment, none of us have picked the same character for any position, yeah. which is really, really interesting at the moment. So it just shows how diverse Star Trek is. Will that stay is. the same? Will it stay the same? So we're going on to communications yeah. officer. So this is going to be an interesting one. So mm-hmm. Okay. Well, f- there was only really one choice for me. Okay. And it was because, uh, well, it's kind of based on the era she's from, Hoshi Sato. Yes. Um, be- just because she puts the effort into learning the languages and in her day it is of course it's more necessary to actually speak the languages to do her job um because the universal Mm -hmm. translator is only you know in its infancy so i just yeah no they brought her down to planets to do the 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 arguing for them and i just think she really uh, excelled at her job and even though she was kind of reluctant to be in space really <laughs> yeah, she, she got space sick and she managed to change yeah. quarters and again really cool pick and i like the way the enterprise kind of like covered and i did like the whole that she had to translate on the spot mm. sometimes which made some great episodes and you could yes. see the stress factor with it as well especially when they were coming yeah. under attack but uh, mm-hmm. again i like the way that they linked in that like she was pretty much behind a lot of the universal translator that later became she mm. was i think it was kind of referenced slightly in the future which was really, really cool. So, oh, yes, that was a great pick. Yeah. Um, I am going with Uhura because um, she was the first, I think, because her role was so iconic, especially at the time of the 60s. But I think she was mm-hmm. a brilliant actor. She's a fantastic woman. Um, there's just so much to love about this lady. Um, she is just awesome. And that's pretty much why I'm picking her. So, <laughs> Damien, I'll cool. shunt over to you. <laughs> Yeah, well, listen, my choice is like a combination of both of yours because I went with Ahura from the JJ universe. So not exactly <laughs> yeah, okay. like you, Chris. Um, because like that, like uh, she knows all the dialects uh, of Romulan, which mm-hmm. is handy. And um, again, she can handle herself on away missions, as we saw. And um, again, I just thought she, uh, well, she, she, her character was portrayed very well in the JJ verse. Um so yeah, JJ Uhura. Mm, okay, for me. Yeah, interesting. Nice okay, nice. Okay, so we're we're nearly got a match, but not quite. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. So we're going on to operations. Normally, sometimes the second officer on a ship. Sue so, Linda. Yep. Um, data is my guy. Okay, yeah. data. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we might have a, a match. Have we? Oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Okay, so why data? Yeah. Oh well. For one thing, I need Data aboard my ship. Okay. Because he's amazing. I love Data. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he would... Oh, he's just... Put him in any any role on the bridge and he'll he'll do exactly what he's meant to do because he's an android and he's going to reprogram his self <laughs> to, uh, to do any role. <laughs> but I just think, yeah, no, ops, he, he's not going to panic over anything. He... He is going to be able to send himself messages in other timelines if he needs to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, Data's the dude. <laughs> cool choice. And just actually, 
just something dawned to me because operations in a lot of the shows normally they would be number two type role it's just funny enough that I know Voyager had a lot of her main crew kind of kill at the start but poor old Hardy Kim really got rawly treated mm. like he never progressed in rank and he was yeah. their operations officer the injustice <laughs> but poor old Hardy Kim I am also Data you have to have Data um, yeah I knew it, just, it you know you couldn't have a ship without Data I think it'd be suicide not to um, I don't know whether they means pick one Data or not but uh, yes I'm going with Data and for all the reasons that Linda picked <laughs> Damien uh, well, I picked Dota. <laughs> um, Finally. The, uh, <laughs> no, we fight. Yeah. For all the same reasons, for all the same reasons. And, you know, as a storytelling device, like I could see him going EVAs and into like toxic, you know, mm. filled rooms and stuff like that. But just data that's, is kick ass. And he's like, that's he funny. is operations yeah. in a nutshell. But that's know? one thing oh, yeah. that we should have seen, like, you know. Like it would have been cool seeing Data doing an EVA walking on the Enterprise E or the D, just yeah. out, you know, just Data, no spacesuit, no one, just having a stroll out on <laughs> on the whole of the ship, exactly. you know, because I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. getting away from you, so. <laughs> okay, so we've all actually gone for Data, which is, I think was, I think that was gone. I, I had a feeling everyone's yeah. going to go for this one. Con officer, yeah. the pilot of the ship, Linda. Ah, uh, I had to go with. Flyboy, Mr. Paris. Okay. Mr. Yeah, Paris. I, I was, I was considering Lieutenant Detmer because she's, she's quite nifty. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, no, Tom Paris, he, ah, he's a bit of a rebel, but he was, he was such a good pilot. And if you go with the whole um, head cannon that he was Nick Lacarno, he's a little bit of a bad boy, and he mm. <laughs> dun, getting dun, involved dun. with the whole uh, yeah. with the Red Squad or whatever. So, yeah, no, I just, I, I think he's the best pilot. And that's one thing with the Tom Paris character. I never got, I don't know why they didn't just leave him as Nick Ricardo. I think it would have probably been better. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, yep. Okay, yep. he got back into the Federation. He finished off a bit. Then he joined the McKees. I think they should have kept his character as it was. But no, we Ugh. got Tom Paris. And I am also going yep. with Tom Paris. And yeah. why? I think, well, to be honest, and I was kind of going nearly with your choice as well, Linda, because anyone that can pull wheelies uh mcdonald's <laughs> with a starship is definitely somebody that he wants yeah. in the pilot seat but uh tom paris why and i think it's just the cockiness and the confidence and i think he was the first real con officer to really show that you know what i mean i am the best we've mm. heard Riker, but Riker sat in the commander seat so and we've also heard P- picard brag a bit as well how good a pilot he was but paris <laughs> was the man he did it and he showed his skills so like i loved Tom yep. Paris. So, Damien, who did you go with? I went with TOS Sulu. Oh, uh, yeah. Because you, you spoke about, you know, doing donuts um, in space. So, hats off to Detmer on that. But listen, I want to see Sulu do like a barrel roll or something like <laughs> that. Because, um, <laughs> you know, I, I'd love to see him oh behind, you know, a ship mm-hmm. capable of being seen on screen to do like some crazy stuff. So yes, this is my first TOS character that I've chosen technically. Uh, so uh, Sulu from uh, TOS. Um, and again, you're going to have some cutscenes of him shirtless fencing and yeah. all that jazz. So like, uh, you have to mention that you when know, you mention Sulu, it has nice. to be done. <laughs> Touche. Okay. And then we're going on to, okay, this is going to be an interesting one. I'm going to see where we're all going to go with this. I have an idea, but I could be wrong. Chief engineer. <laughs> Linda. Okay. Well, speaking of barrel rolls, uh, yeah, LaForge is is my engineer. LaForge. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah, LaForge can barrel roll under a, a a door or you know stop a coolant leak. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> a blast door barrel. Uh, and roll, he can yeah. stop a coolant coolant leak without leaking his own cool. No. <laughs> was that that point, was he really good? Cool? Because he did kind of barrel roll underneath that door quite a lot. He nearly lost quite the a, bit. a few times. Quite a bit. And barrel rolled onto the bridge one time as well. Oh, so. That's thrown out the turbo lift. And uh, you know, yeah. he always played it well. Bridge, she's going to blow. That's funny. <laughs> Three yeah. minutes to uh, a core breach. Uh, one oh, minute. I love Jordy. Yeah, Jordy was <laughs> without losing his cool. <laughs> was oh, so corny. I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did not prepare that joke. <laughs> That was the one with the <laughs> Iconian probe, and that was such a great episode. And what an entrance to the bridge! I think it's the best <laughs> entrance by anyone by far to get yeah, on that totally, bridge, like totally. getting flung out of a turbo lift. 
Um, okay, I am going to go Miles O'Brien. I bet she is there. Not surprised by that one. Not surprised. <laughs> well, one, I think, it, it, if just not because of the Irishness, and I did put thought into this, Jordy LaForge was a very, very close contender. Scotty was also a very close contender. You know, Scotty likes to multiply his times by three to make him look like a miracle worker. But with O'Brien is the fact that, well, between transporters is his thing, but like he did look after Deep Space Nine, which was a rust bucket falling apart. And plus as well, he had to look after the Defiance. So it, the, the, the man is a workaholic. Uh, <laughs> so that's why I'm going with O'Brien. Mm-hmm. 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 Good choice, good choice. I went with Reno uh, because she cracks me up. Uh, she showed her dedication with sticking with the injured crew uh, on that asteroid. And um, again, quoting prints and using like duct tape and stuff like that to fix stuff. Um, I just think uh, she would more than do her due duty to keep a ship together, but also making people giggle with just that dry wit. Uh, more more Reno, please. More Reno. Yeah, Re- Reno. Good laugh. Good character. And don't forget the pub, uh, chewing gum as well comes in handy and the way she yeah. stood up to Stamus yep. the, the little kind of catty fight with Stamus over like what dilithium and spores was a really funny t- scene between the two of them I that just I, I actually like that one so <laughs> yeah yeah we're moving on to our sick bay who would you like to look after you when you're not feeling too well we're looking for our chief medical officer well Chris there's only one choice for me and that's the EMH Ooh. Yeah, I, I just think, yeah, I think the doctor is probably the most important crew member um, mm-hmm. because there would be no other crew members if there was no doctor. <laughs> so um, I think having an EMH, not an EMH, because I, I say H, <laughs> um, I just mm-hmm. think takes the risk away from having your doctor injured um, and it makes the most sense. You could program him with whatever newfangled medical knowledge there is and the command backup program which was really really oh, cool oh yeah that was actually and, and, and it went to his head as well himself and harry kim fighting over who's who's in command when they get your call take back was actually quite funny and that yeah was very my good. favorite yeah. moment with the doctor i think it has to be in first contact the way that beverly yeah. crusher uses them there to hold <laughs> off the pork <laughs> yeah you look that as though you've awesome. got some skin <laughs> irritation there brilliant yeah i'm going with yeah yeah here's an analgesic <laughs> <laughs> i'm going with beverly crusher i just thought she was very very nice pleasant well-mannered doctor no fuss if you came in she'd always look after you plus as well she kind of had something going on with the captain so she got on her good side you never know there could be some a promotion or two on the line oh. i'd say o'brien probably that's why o'brien never really went up the ranks too much on the Enterprise D because she was probably sick of his kayak injuries, unlike Bashir. So <laughs> I'm gonna go with Doctor Crusher. Okay, cool, cool. cool. All right, uh, my choice uh, was also the EMH, okay, uh, or H, whatever, however you'd like to say your your H's. <laughs> Doctor Zimmerman um, was one of his names. Doctor well, Zimmerman, yeah. exactly. The Doctor. The Doctor. Um, because like that. Uh, like he he was awesome on Voyager. Um, it was almost like a blend of like bones, cause you know his bedside manner. But then, you know, improving his program, and then you know the the command protocols and messaging the bottle, and going on the away mission where he had a family and, and um, like that. Uh, just such diversity in that one character, but also like again, the sick bay is kind of like the heart of the ship mm. as well. Everyone ends up there for be it physical or emotional um difficulties as well you know and um some great story arcs come out of that and uh yeah emh, EMH um was awesome what was the name cool. actually in um the last episode that he actually picked for himself tom paris kind of slagged him it was like you know like 20 odd years 30 years and that's what you come up with <laughs> it was like mark or john or something <laughs> with his wife oh god uh, <laughs> there's one for I you I only watched it a few months ago <laughs> <laughs> love the way yeah. how some Trek trivia I falls out of your head I can't yeah. anyway moving on <laughs> this is the fun part now so we're on to our <laughs> wild card so we've got two to play around with so Linda wild card pick number one position and the crew member uh huh right well you gave us a few suggestions and I went with transporter okay. uh, operator or transporter chief and I thought 
wouldn't it be hilarious if Chief O'Brien was just standing there <laughs> okay, still yeah. in the transporter room? Just Making chips in the bottle. Just <laughs> waiting for someone to want to go somewhere. <laughs> like in the little um, the little comic strip, um, O'Brien at Work, is it called? Okay, perfect. Um, where he's just, yeah, he's just standing around waiting for someone to come and he'll press the button. I think it would be funny. Oh, good. Oh, yes. Now, did he really <laughs> make ships in a bottle? Do we believe that? Riker did. Yeah. No one else did. Wholeheartedly. Oh, yeah, ships in the bottle. Yeah. yeah, ships in the bottle. <laughs> I don't believe it. Okay, I'm going to pick... My first wild card is going to be a science position. And it's my Vulcan. And it's Spock. Hey, hey it's, mm. it's legal. He's, he's a science officer. I'm picking a science <laughs> officer. And it's Spock. So I'm throwing him in there. And I it's think, legal. Yeah, it's legal. Um, yeah, you need a Vulcan on your ship. And Spock would be... It'd be interesting to see Spock just be a science officer, which I'm really looking forward to in Strange New Worlds. He doesn't have to wait on his shoulders mm-hmm. of being a number one. And he is a pretty much kick-ass science officer. So, I'm, yeah, I would go with Spock. So, Damien... Uh, which, which Spock? Which Spock? Oh, uh, original three. Spock. Original, original. Okay, okay, cool. TOS Spock. There's so many to choose from. Yes, there is. Um... My first wild card is stellar cartography, Ooh. and uh, of course, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, seven of nine. I have a funny feeling Ooh. that's going to be Linda's next one. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a great choice. And I don't need to explain why. <laughs> it was one that I was actually really, really thinking of as well. I would have loved to fit seven into my crew, but seven kicks ass. Mm. Yes. Reasons, Damien, awesome. why you picked her? Yeah. She kicks ass. <laughs> That's good. Awesome. But okay, so we'll go on to our <laughs> second wild card and Linda. I have a funny feeling this is gonna be the same as Damien's last one. No, you're wrong. <gasps> Whoa, okay. You're wrong. Okay, cool. Mm. I love surprises. So I picked a ship's counsellor. Okay. And my ship's counsellor is going to be holographic. Okay. And I picked Vic Fontaine. Cool. Oh. And I put yeah, yeah I promoted nice. him. Uh, yeah, and I, I think whatever ship he's on, there's going to be a little bar yeah. with holographic projectors. And you go in there whenever you have a problem and you don't even feel like you're going to see a counsellor. You just sit down, mm. order a drink. Yeah. Along comes Vic, <laughs> helps you with your problems. And he did great with Nog and he did great with setting up Kira. And yeah. I would have probably one of the more funnier scenes uh, from Deep Space Nine. Yeah. I'd heard of humor how he yeah. set those two up in there. Little hissy Excellent fit in the yeah. Yeah, so that uh, Actually, Linda... That is thinking outside the box. That's brilliant, actually. I, I like yeah, I like Councillor Vic Fontaine. He even yep. shared Quark mm-hmm. up a bit. Yeah, he's yeah. a legend. Yeah, okay. So my second wild card is going to be an Admiral. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be Admiral Janeway. Because I thought you kicked ass. Um, Giving me card. Uh, the orders. And now Janeway overall. This was a hard one. Kirk was nearly going to make it. But you put Kirk in there. I think he'd just be. He'd want to take back the ship. <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> he ran Decker off <laughs> he, he nicked command off Spock so that's the only reason why Kirk's not getting in there but I think Janeway as an admiral well she's just amazing and I think you know if you had a ship with Janeway and Cisco, my god be scared oh I think the Borg would actually pack their <laughs> mm-hmm. bags and hightail it out of the Delta Quadrant and far far away and never be seen of again big time so big yeah time. Janeway is my second wild card. So, Damien, the last crew member before we go into the pets. My second wild card. I kind of wanted to fill out the bridge, so I went with science, okay. and I went with Jadzia. Ooh. Um, yeah. Just because, again, kicks ass. Yeah. Straight yeah. up. She's cool. I I was I would have liked to have got Jadzia in there. Jadzia was actually getting into. Oh, sorry. Is it Jadzia or Ezri? Jadzia. Jadzia Dax. Yeah, I was. Esri to... was. Um, what position was she in? Counselor. She was in science. No, she wasn't yeah, science. She was yeah, she counselor. Yeah. Counselor. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. Jadzia was uh, the science officer. Yeah, good choice. Good choice. So yeah. we will do our pets. Okay, so Linda, you have the first one with the pet. Porthos. Oh, good choice. <laughs> Nothing Very I can quick say. Off just the bat yeah. There. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, He's a good boy. Yes, uh, Portos <laughs> is a very, very good call. Um, I am going to go with one of Picard's fishes. 
costs. <laughs> <laughs> just simple. <laughs> just sits in a tank. And even the Ferengi can't get the fish out of the tank, so well secured. But unfortunately, with Picard's fish, we did hear some horror stories that sometimes the guys left the studio lights on and they got cooked in their tank, which is fairly sad. <laughs> Bless the poor little yeah. yeah, I'm going with Picard's oh fish because it just seemed to annoy yeah. the Ferengi. And it did do some comical moments every now and again on Star Trek. So yep. Damien, yep. your fish. Uh, my fish. Uh, you, my fish is a pet? dog <laughs> called Porthos. Porthos. And, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just because yeah. Like, I, I I picture, you remember the little robots in uh, that came out of the Enterprise, the dot robots? Yeah. Um, uh-huh. I, I just picture one of them walking the dog down the corridors <laughs> and like, you know, having the dog be on the bridge and stuff like that. Um, or getting, getting up to all sorts of... Uh, mischief but uh yeah listen i'm a dog person through and through so simple choice yeah, <laughs> I, I love to, i'd love to see a crossover with uh red dwarf scutters and one of those repair droids from uh enterprise uh, the, yeah the, yeah the yeah yeah it could, be, it could be kind of funny <laughs> you know droids that are actually doing work and droids that are just like acting the maggot <laughs> mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so one of the bigger characters um of all normally is the ships so linda what ship or what class of ship are you going with or did you come up with a name it, for your ship or oh i didn't know we were allowed no, to do that you do if you want yeah <laughs> but you can pick a class you can pick a ship but it can be an existing I, ship so it doesn't matter no i just went with the enterprise d okay the galaxy class um, enterprise oh, d man, it, yeah it just it's like a luxury hotel yeah. i would just want to walk around in my bare feet on the carpet and <laughs> rich the, velour <laughs> yeah the, the the bridge is like walking in onto a into a cinema a cinema a cinema foyer yeah it just it has a feel that you're about to sit down and watch the big yeah. screen it's just uh comfortable you know 10 forward mm. it separates got a battle bridge it's just the coolest ship Excellent. Interior, the coolest interior, I must say. Okay. Um, I am going with the Ambassador class, and I think I'll just go with the USS Ambassador. We'll go with the first one. Um, I just like the, the Enterprise C. I just, there's something about it. Funky design. Hmm. It's kind of in that kind of Star Trek the movies phase, and then what you've got, you've got the next generation. So you're kind of like in the near halfway point. So I just, I like the ship. And mm-hmm. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna break the mold. I'm gonna go with the Ambassador class starship, which was the Enterprise C. But I'm just gonna. I'm gonna go with the USS Ambassador. First one off the, the production line. Damien, in your okay. ship. Well, I when I was picking my crew, I picked my ship first, and then mm. I built the crew around the ship, and um, I picked the Prometheus. Ooh, oh, oh, because. Dude. I was like, EMH can go anywhere, number one. Yeah. Um, it's nice and bright, but it's not like an Apple shop like the JJ version. So <laughs> I was like, I'm kind of, thank thank you, the next generation, for liking the finer things in life. And um, you mentioned it, Linda. You know, it separates multi-vector assault mode. Um, just yeah. cut an edge. And I think it, the crew that I picked would be like super soft sea in a ship like that. And maybe, maybe there would be a little, you know, bar in there somewhere i don't know maybe not in a multi-vector ship but uh yeah i i just love to see more of uh the prometheus so um it could be it could have a separating bar and that's what i was a gonna say you know bar. yeah the, the, the captain's yacht <laughs> yeah i mean we've no room for a bar we'll put that right hang yeah. on captain's yacht right literally get rid of that, a, get rid of that put a bar in there happy days yeah exactly <laughs> that's what they didn't that's what they did in voyager because like that that aero shuttle was never finished so they had to use it for something obviously <laughs> you know Janeway's yeah. coffee mill or something I don't know now, but, uh, uh, yeah. going on the aero shuttle that's one thing that you do love when designers come around and they try and make excuses why and uh, Rick's one was that it was put in it was never finished but yet they were and then like some fans come up and say well yet they were able to build the Delta Flyer and not finish the aero shuttle which yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we know it was yeah. just too much money to make a CGI file bastards yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're, could have been we're going on to which is a cool idea. Uniforms. So Linda. Yes. Uniforms. Right. What uniform are you well, going to go for? I was uh, a long time thinking of the First Contact era uniform. Nice. Uh, but then I thought, no, wait a second. I want to see the Lower Decks uniform Good in real choice. life. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's a, you know, it's mm-hmm. a cartoon 
drawing of a uniform it's kind of hard to imagine but i did do, do a cosplay of it and once i was putting it together i just thought this is this would look cool on mm-hmm. real people so i would love to see a star trek ship with the real lower decks uniform excellent choice and linda i have to say you were one of the first people i've seen do that and if you haven't seen it check out linda's twitter um absolutely awesome. br- it is brilliant and hats off Thanks. to you on that one. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to go with the... A hen in the hat off. A hen even. in the hat off. I like that. <laughs> I am going to go with the Monster Maroons, but I'm going to do the twist and I'm going to put mm. in the colours, which I think it was Trek yeah. Cat Cat Cat. Bro. I, don't, I, I don't think it was him, but initially I think he got one, which is really, really cool. But yeah, the actual departmental uh, colours. And I would mm. maybe change the color scheme to tng style so command would be uh the burgundy or the, the maroon and then you'd mm-hmm. have your blue and you'd have your yellows but i, I just think it, it'd be cool just to change up a uniform a little bit but i do I, I i love the monster maroon i just think they have been my favorite uniform for a very long time i do like the lower decks one though as well and good mm-hmm. call so damien what are you gonna go with season three tng oh nice mm. um it's just I, I I like the the more visible colors, and um, you know the old uh, tummy tuck when everyone sits up. Um, <laughs> the Picard maneuver, you know, exactly the Picard maneuver, and uh, I just thought it was cool. I just I like the collar, uh, the dark shoulders, and yeah, uh, it just it was cut well, and I think it I I'm sure it was highly uncomfortable from what I remember, but. Um, it was it was uh, it was stitched together very well to fit onto the actors and uh, they just looked cool and uh, mm-hmm. yeah uh, I like the other ones don't yeah. get me wrong but um, yeah season three to yeah it was it was the whole season three to season seven wasn't yeah. it yeah I think and then I think all the cast they, of the they next generation changed it up a bit then after that I think all the cast of the generation crew would would agree with you on the season three uniform because I believe the big annoying thing for them was the fact that there were jumpsuits and they were annoyed going to the bathroom. So they yeah. were delighted that it became a two piece, but I think, geez, they would have went back to the jumpsuits for uh, generations. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. costume designers and and uh, directors can be just evil, <laughs> you know. But it's just yeah, put them yeah. back in the jumpsuit, yeah. affect them. <laughs> <laughs> the evilness of it all. So yeah, that is quite interesting. So the only positions that we've actually had the same was data across the board. For yeah. operations and that just goes to show the diversity of star yeah. trek you know and we've, mm-hmm. we've always mm-hmm. said that no one is ever right and no one's ever wrong whatever choices that you pick and i think that's kind of proof to actually just show there that like you know we're, we're three big star trek fans and we haven't picked apart from data so, and portos and portos well there's two for portos mm-hmm. i went with the fish yeah i'm sorry portos didn't cut portos for me. was a close second and we were, there were two cheese. uhuras but different uhuras oh, yes yeah. Porto likes cheese okay. and I don't like cheese, so that's Porto's no. Sorry. Oh, there was two EMHs as well. So the, oh, there yeah, was yeah. only one character got us all and that was data and everyone else was yeah. different. So interesting. Yeah. So looking forward to seeing what everyone else will pick and hopefully by the time this goes up we will have a, a Twitter account for the Neuroscape podcast. And what we'll do is we might just take it when the when we get this out, we'll maybe do it like half and half with what you call it each of our picks and then looking forward to seeing everybody else's who they pick in for those positions because that's going to be really really cool because as, as we can see mm-hmm. by our list it, we, we've just kind of like you know and like I think I surprised Linda on one or two I'm surprised by Linda you know no no mm. seven or nine it, it's funny uh, I was yeah no I was I was thinking of her but I yeah I just Mr. Fontaine in there for the win yeah, oh, I've, yeah. I've gone on about seven a lot yeah. recently so I, 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 I give her a break I think I'm, I'm with Damien on that Fontaine for the win as a ship's counsellor is yeah. pretty pretty damn cool <laughs> yeah I agree I'd love him cool so we're going to come up with another idea for next week because we've had you on I'd say this, I'd say this is almost coming up to an hour long podcast which, is, which has been a fun chat um, so listen thanks folks for taking the time out of your day to stop by to listen to our ramblings and uh, we look forward to hearing as Chris said your uh, wild cards and fantasy crew as well so um, as always do share this podcast with people that you think will enjoy it get the name of the Nerd Escape out there and uh, we'll say our goodbye so it's a goodbye from me Aslan Gavol Ihawa from me goodbye and I'll see you next time <laughs>